Hello, thank you to each of you for joining our webinar this morning. My name is Delphine Martin, Global Marketing Manager at Climalife, and I will be the moderator during this webinar. As you know, the expenses related to cooling installation represent a very important part of the energy bill of a shop. In a context where consumers are more and more interested in supermarket chains that are implementing action to reduce their carbon footprint, it's essential to consider which refrigeration system to put in place. And above all, what will today's shows cost you tomorrow? So the objective of this webinar is to present a decision support tool validated by the Semafro Institute and connected solution dedicated to thermodynamic equipment. To address this issue, I will be joined by Neil Roberts, Senior Technical Sales Manager at Climalife. Hello, Neil. Good morning, Delphine. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, sir. I'm okay, thank you. Jean de Bernardi, Technical Team Leader at Honeywell. Hi, Jean. Good morning, Delphine. Good morning, everybody. And Elodie Delonca, Activity Director at Matelex. Good morning, everyone. Welcome online. During this webinar, we are going to carry out a small quiz and invite you to answer. The first question is, do you know what the term TEWI means? In introduction, Let's talk with Neil Roberts about the environmental, regulatory, and societal issues. Thank you, Delphine, and hello to everyone attending this webinar. As Delphine explained, today we are going to consider the importance of often overlooked consequences that may occur when choosing which refrigeration technology should be used in the retail sector. Today, supermarkets are taking action to satisfy customer requirements. This consumer awareness of societal issues is evident as environmental, social, and economic impacts, which themselves will be linked to the strategic objectives of retailers. This is why the retail sector are taking bold actions and making commitments to satisfy consumers and suit their new way of buying. Whether it is about waste, quality, the choice to work with local suppliers, so-called short circuits, reducing food miles, supporting organic products, or to favor the circular economy. Ultimately, all of these contribute to protect the environment. That's why this webinar aims to shed light on the importance of your choices for your refrigeration systems and the role systems, uh, system energy efficiency contributes to achieving those strategic objectives. As well as the consumer opinion, there is also a regulatory context with regulation 517-2014, better known as the FGAS regulation. In brief, this regulation puts in place measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which have a global warming effect, by limiting or even banning the use of certain refrigerants, depending on their characteristics. One of these characteristics is GWP, or global warming potential. GWP is an indicator of the ability of a fluid to cause global warming if it le leaks into the atmosphere. It is calculated compared to the main greenhouse gas, CO2, or carbon dioxide. Some of the restrictions imposed by the FGAS regulation are based on certain GWP values. And as you can see on this chart, there are a number. The first two, affecting uh, new commercial refrigerators and freezers and stationary refrigeration using uh, refrigerants with a GWP greater than 2,500 came into the place at the beginning of last year, so they are already well established. Beginning of next year, all new hermetically sealed systems and uh, multi-compressor centralized systems for retail system uh, applications greater than 40 kilowatts will have to use a refrigerant less than 150 GWP. And there are others as well as you can see. Another measure of this regulation is to put in place mandatory actions to reduce leakage from refrigeration installations, which historically, before the FGAS came into force, 
may have been greater than 20% per year. Compliance with FGAS may require the replacement of existing equipment with new equipment, and in many cases, the installation of equipment to detect or restrict leakage is also required. In addition to the FGAS regulation, the EU and other non-EU governments are making commitments to reducing greenhouse gases by reducing energy consumption and decarbonisation of power generation. The Global Climate Agreement at the end of 2015 in Paris set the target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by at least 40% by 2030, compared to 1990. The European Commission proposed in September 2020 to increase the greenhouse gas emissions reduction target, including both emissions and usage reduction, to at least 55% by 2030, compared to 1990. So for Europe, the three key objectives for 2030 are 40% less greenhouse gas emissions compared to 1990, to increase the share of renewable energy to at least 32%, and to have an energy efficiency improvement of at least 32.5%. The European Commission's proposal to move towards more efficient installations by 2030 is a strong indicator of its importance. In conclusion, Energy efficiency of systems is a strategic priority, and therefore any choice of refrigeration solution must take this into account. In a moment, Jean de Bernardi is going to present the importance of, of considering all the parameters before making your strategic choices. But before handing over to him, I'm just going to quickly go over some of the terms which will be used. So GWP, we've already mentioned global warming potential, this is the uh, value in terms of carbon dioxide equivalents that one kilogram of a fluid would uh, have if it escapes from refrigeration system into the atmosphere. Uh, TUI or TWI, uh, total equivalent warming impact, is the amount of carbon dioxide equivalents from the operation of the system. That includes the power generation emissions plus any leakage from that system. LCCP, life cycle climate performance. Uh, this is a cradle to grave uh, type of measure where you look at the CO2 equivalent emissions during the whole life cycle of that product from manufacturing, use, transport, right up until disposal of that unit. So there are different ways that which you can look at these things. When looking at eco-efficiency, it's really important to consider which are the most important things and which things will have the biggest impact. Efficiency, environmental ben benefit, should you be looking at GWP, TUI, or LCCP? And of course, there's a, an economic benefit as well that will have a, an effect on your bottom line and operating income. So I'd now like to hand back to Delphine. Thank you, Neil, for that uh, clarification. Choosing a refrigeration system also means uh, taking into account a number of criteria, such as climate zone, architecture, payback, maintenance, etc. Decision cannot be taken only on the basis of the cost of the refrigerants and its GWP. I now give the floor to Jean de Bernardi, who will present the eco-efficiency tool. Thank you, Delphine. So, eco-efficiency, what is it? Um, you, you have seen, and Neil mentioned that, uh, GWP uh, is directly related to the leakage of a refrigerant in the atmosphere. And you can see in this chart uh, that it represents, uh, and everybody agrees on that, roughly 35% of what we could uh, name as a pollution of a system when it leaks, okay? Obviously, if it doesn't leak, this, uh, this metrics has no sense. But uh, GWP is the center of most of the, uh, the schemes of environmental uh, impact now, and uh, still doesn't give you any idea of the cost to reach this uh, reduction in case of leakage. Uh, the, then the, the two other ones that Neil explained are the TWI and LCCP, so the, I hope you understood the difference between TWI and LCCP is, is very 
limited uh, because considering TWI, which is actually the GWP plus the electricity consumption, so the energy efficiency, you already catch 95% of the pollution of the system when if you want to go to LCCP, you need to go very deep into the details uh, from the truck to deliver the system to the service maintenance cars, etc. So, and a lot of complexity just for 5% better capture of the environmental impact. So we prefer to, to stick on TWI. But these two metrics uh, are still totally uh, not talking about financial. So you still don't know how much you will have to pay uh, to, to improve this environmental impact. So eco-efficiency is basically uh, considering TWI as the metrics for environmental impact and considering the total cost of ownership. So each and every cent that you will have to pay for your system during this whole lifetime uh, so, so, so this is the metrics for economics. Once you have that, you are able for a given system in a given shop under a given climate. I will show you some some details. Uh, you are able to plot uh, for one choice of architecture in a supermarket. Uh, on the chart on the right, for instance, you could plot the environmental benefit or penalty. So this is a TWI. Uh, versus the uh, financial uh, penalty or benefit, which is the total cost of ownership. In the model, there is, uh, okay, this is a complex model. There is a lot of things inside. I just show you very uh, fast what, what could be inside because obviously don't stick on what's written here because the, the, the calculator we have developed is fully uh, modificable. You, you can change anything, you can tailor and change any parameters. So in general, I would say that there is a climatic zone, which is very important, the load of the shop, etc. In the operating condition, obviously, <clears throat> after the lifetime, the leak rates, again, you can modify them, uh, the temperature from medium, low temp, etc. So this is the very basic. Important is uh, the, the capex and the opex, so all the bill of material, etc. And uh, as, as Delphine mentioned, uh, this is very important to understand that this model has been validated by Semafro. And Semafro, for those who do not know this organization, is one of the, I would say, the only or, or, or biggest uh, refrigeration expert institute, third party for parts of its activity, uh, notified body for parts of its activity. And they are certifying uh, most of your your refrigerated cabinets, etc. And they have an entity uh, able to 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 validate software simulations, etc. So uh, this entity uh, has validated all the technical assumptions we we, we have in, inserted in the model, and the financial entity, they have a, an entity specialized in refrigeration financials validated all the, the inputs for the OPEX, all the, all the financial side. So this is the first and the only model I know in the market that is validated by a third party and notified body. So it could be used as a, let's say, an independent tool and anyway, everything you put inside could be your data, not, not anybody else. So, so this is um, a picture of, of how it works, uh, the coefficiency calculator. You can see on the left, um, it it's all starts with the choice of architecture you want to compare. So most of the architecture which are existing today can be used. You could change the refrigerant and uh, you can decide on the size of the store. Uh, there are presets inside to go fast, but you, you could really go down to your, your precise area, your precise everything. The second step is obviously to choose uh, the, the, the store location. There is a panel of, of possibilities. And as you can see on, on, the, on, on the right hand side, you, you can define all the parameters of your shop or decide when you just want to, to do a fast comparison you can decide to, to stay on the preset uh, to compare architecture very fast, to change the refrigerant and see how, how, it, how it works. 
and then ultimately do the fine tuning of your, your, your shop configuration. So the big message here is that uh, this eco-efficiency calculator validated by Semaphore can be tailored to any store configuration. And these are the results you can get from this uh, software. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see my famous 2D printing where each and every plot represents an architecture for the same store giving the same cooling capacity. So it means that for the sales area, you will sell the same number of, uh, of goods and the same quantity. Uh, then, uh, you, 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 but, but you can see here that, for instance, in this particular example, which has been done just for the sake of demonstration, you can see that all these architecture are beneficial compared to the baseline, which is the center point, uh, which in this case was chosen to be for, for a traditional direct expansion system. So this is quite easy to be better than 404A. But you can see that this, this improvement, which is in the range of the 25 to 30% better TOE, so better environmental impact, doesn't come at the same cost uh, on the bottom line. Because from the, the, the cheapest to the, the most expensive, you have a gap of more than 20, 25 or something like that, 30%. And this 25, 30% is the cost of your choice. If you make this kind of wrong choice for your, 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 your bottom line, uh, this is what it will cost you. On the left hand side, this is the granulometry of the analysis we can reach with this calculator because you can go down to, to very precisely what is the capex, what is the opex, what is the maintenance cost, etc. what is the exact uh, CO2 emission. So, so it gives you all the details uh, of, of your, your store in, in, in various contexts of different architectures. So in the example of today, uh, because you can imagine, understand, this is an infinite possibility of, 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 of configurations, we decided to compare, and you understand why afterwards, two, two kinds of architectures. The first one, as we consider the baseline here, so this will be the central plot, are the CO2 boosters. Um, so when, when we talk about cold climates, it will be the basic booster. And when we get into the warm climates, the, the architecture modeled will be the multiple ejector with parallel compression. So the, the, the architecture normally used for warm climate. And we will compare these two ones to a direct expansion system using 455A, which is our long-term option to replace 404A with AGWP uh, below 150. So it's, it's a long-term refrigerant. So in these direct expansion possibilities, two kinds of uh, architectures, one, is what we call the semi-distributed. So instead of having a machinery room with a centralized rack, you cut the, the refrigeration system into several loops. So smaller loops managed by a, a large condensing units. So you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, I mean, depending on the size of the store. And uh, according to EN378, and economic uh, match to, to, to be viable. Uh, we investigate this with Simafro as well. Uh, this architecture is very beneficial and interesting and allowed by EN378, uh, co considering the charge allowance of this A12 refrigerant in public area, up to roughly 2,500 square meters stores. So this is for us the target is everything below this value, 2,500 square meter, is super adapted to this kind of semi-distributed architecture with direct expansion for 55A. So when it is going above or larger system or industrial ones, then we go to some traditional centralized system, but using uh, that direct expansion for 55A. Now, what we have done is the reverse of what is usually done when you talk about simulation tools. Uh, we, we started by case study, so, so real applied cases, and we use the tool to tailor the analysis on what has been done. 
And then we, we will try to understand the benefits of the choices this, uh, this customer made, and, and you will see the impacts on, on economics and, and the climate. So the first case study is happening in Central England. This is co-op organization. And uh, th this is a, a small shop, so less than 300 square meters. And you can see that for this one, the charge of refrigerant of 455A is about 35 kg, for 35 kilo. For the end user here, the two drivers were energy efficiency and uh, uh, a maintenance cost that could be controlled. So these were the two key drivers that drove the owner to go to direct expansion 455A. So if we look at the results of the simulation, you can see the now the famous efficiency chart where in the center you have the CO2 booster, so which, which is the reference, so it starts with zero, zero at the, at the ori origin. And you could see 455A plot upper right uh, in, in the green area, where in terms of environmental impact, the choice of going 455A compared to the choice that would have been to go to a CO2 booster, represent a 13% of environmental impact improvement, which is significant. And this is achieved at the, the financial improvement as well of 23%, which is quite huge. So uh, I think this is important to, to, to realize that just a choice could, could change a lot for the climate and for the economics of your, of your activity. Then this uh, simulation tool, as it has been validated, we can use it as a projection tool as well. I call it my crystal ball. I mean, this is the, the dream of any engineer to have a crystal ball, but then we have one because we could uh, vary assumptions. We could vary uh, entry data to see how our choice that we make at a certain moment in time could be consistent along the, the lifetime of the installation. For instance, what happens if the cost of electricity increases dramatically? I mean, this is a question we have in France, for instance, now, because we know the cost of electricity could, could increase. So does my choice of going, in this case, for 55A versus CO2, would be valid if the cost of electricity increases by 50%. And this is what we have simulated. And you can see on the second column of my chart below uh, that when you go from 23% improvement at the initial cost of electricity, if you increase the cost by 50%, which is huge, you still save 20% uh, of the total cost of ownership, so the full lifetime of the installation. So no impact on the environmental impact for sure. But on cost, uh, cost-wise, this is really consistent and still very significant. So the choice that was made at, at the beginning uh, is absolutely consistent. Then the second uh, things we can project, and this is uh, comments we have a lot, is what about uh, if the cost of refrigerant increases? Uh, Delphine mentioned uh, that, that the cost of refrigerant can be the only driver. And we can see there, if we increase by 30% the cost of the refrigerant, for instance, I'm not saying that this is what you want to do, the HFO and, and blends are very stable in time if you look at, at the history. But even though it, it would increase by 30%, we still have a 22% versus 23 so improvement of, 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 uh, of financials. So uh, these parameters like electricity cost or refrigerant cost are not uh, the, the the first order parameters uh, to justify the choice. The number one parameters is obviously the, uh, the energy efficiency. But the second one that we found, and this is systematic in all our analysis, is the cost of reliability. Because what happens if the system stops one day? And, and we know CO2 booster when heat waves are coming, uh, could have this kind of issue, that there was epidemic issues in France in 2019, 2020, uh, and, and, and we know in the rest of the world uh, that there are many things like that. So we worked with 
um, with a technical association of, of, of the retail sector to get the impact of the, the simply the losses of sales of turnover of, the, of one day of sales and what impact it could have on, on the total cost of ownership of, of a shop so one day of stopping the system so one day of crash of a co2 system has an impact between 4.5 to 5 percent on the total cost of ownership of the full lifetime of the store so this is absolutely huge and you can imagine if you have one two three days of of stop then it is a 15 percent uh, decrease in if we coefficient score of the co2 booster so this this 23 percent improvement that we can see at the beginning could become even even much larger if you consider the cost of reliability then on the on the just to, to finalize my explanation you can see on the top right uh, the, the, the again the granulometry of, 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 the, of the, the differences and to explain why uh, 455a performs better there is a difference in opex in blue in capex sorry in blue at the beginning but the main difference is on the orange part which is uh, as i mentioned the, the opex so the, the energy efficiency basically so the next example we are increasing size again uh, a supermarket uh, this is in spain this one is in barcelona so we are touching the, the warm climates and this is a 100 2000 square meters where here we are talking about uh, three uh, three compressors here three circuits in direct expansion which is of each of them having 30 kilo of 455a uh, interesting to, to see the code of the, 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 the installer, the, the owner, uh, where they mentioned that 455A was as easy to install as any A1. So very easy to, to, to do that with risk analysis, it's super simple, so absolutely no issue. And, and so you, you can see now in the simulation of a coefficient, the, 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 the results are okay. Everything I explain is, is the same format. The results are varying a little. Here we are talking about 16% improvement versus the choice of CO2 in this case. Still the same environmental impact. This is just happening uh, not on purpose. Huh? This is the, the reality of the, of, the, of the simulation. And same approach on electricity cost and, and refrigerant cost potentialities. And you can see from 16% total cost of ownership improvement, we move to 15 and 15.5. So again, absolutely neglectable impact for these two parameters. And the cost of reliability is very stable. We perform actually the analysis from, from 250 square meters to 2,500, basically, with the, the technical association of retail sector. And for this one, this is very stable. This is again between the four to five percent. So uh, very important to to consider this and to understand that from from this small shop initially in England to this one in Barcelona, we still have a very significant uh, savings in uh, environmental impact and in uh, in bottom line in the cost as well. My my last example. Yeah, go ahead. Excuse me, Jean, you mentioned that uh, we can change uh, some parameters like uh, the price of electricity or the price of refrigerants. What else can we change in this model? Ah, uh, so in, in the model, you can change absolutely everything. So, so this is, uh, there are hundreds of parameters you can, you can change, even though, as I mentioned, for very fast analysis, you have preset. But you could eventually add uh, tax incentives inside. You could add, uh, I don't know, carbon taxes if you like. You, you could move a lot of things. Uh, you could move the service, uh, the, the service um, costs. I mean, you, you can generate a lot of uh, variations and, and project the, the impact on your initial choice. So the last example is this one, an industrial loan. Uh, this is, um, this is the, 
a Spanish logistic distribution plant. This is for seafood, so medium temperature refrigeration. And here we are in Madrid, so even, even warmer. And this one is very important for, for seafood lovers because this is the platform that delivers uh, Spanish seafood to, to most of the places in Europe. So this one has to be super reliable. And you can see here, we are talking about 800 kilo of 455A in direct expansion. So this one, again, risk analysis shows very easy charge. Uh, big charges um, are, are very easy, actually, in industrial sector where you, you are not in the public uh, domain. And the results of this uh, simulation that we tailored on, on what has been done are very significant. So the eco-efficiency model, you are familiar to this one now, shows here a financial benefit of 19% compared to what would have been with a CO2 booster. And again, the CO2 with variable, uh, with uh, multiple ejectors and, and, and parallel compression. And the environmental impact is 17%. I go fast on the electricity and cost of refrigerant because, again, these are not uh, varying a lot. And on this example, I wanted to, to, to formalize uh, in, in, in euros and, and something we know, what are the two financial and environmental impacts. So for this installation, having chosen, simply having chosen 455A versus uh, CO2 represents for the owner an economy of close to 600,000 euros. This is absolutely enormous. And this comes uh, essentially on the electricity bill. Okay, CapEx is, is something obviously, but uh, you can see the big mass is really on the electricity, electricity bill. So this is really on energy efficiency. Then the CO2 emission, these 2,061 tons of CO2 which are saved just choosing the right architecture for this application, represents getting rid of more than 400 cars out of the road. So uh, just by making a choice, I think this is quite significant to understand. Uh, and, and the last point I wanted to mention here is that we cannot, uh, we cannot evaluate the cost of reliability in this case because uh, they are not selling uh, directly to people. I mean, we don't have data on, on their sales turnover. But in the case of, uh, if it would have been a transcritical CO2 here that could eventually crash, here the, the, this would be more in, 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 uh, in the sense of seafood losses that we should uh, investigate in the efficiency tool to, to value uh, the total cost of ownership reduction. And here it could be very, very, very expensive. Can you imagine all this seafood uh, spoiled? So I, I think it has to be done uh, case by case. If, if, if you are in this case, you could enter your data. And typically, Delphin, this is something the, um, the software can do, is, is to, 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 to evaluate the, the losses in food, for instance, and add it to the losses of turnover if it is the case of a supermarket. So I hope it gives you some 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 good uh, good insight of the of the of the, um, of the software and, and and show you how you could make uh, relevant choices for your bottom line and for the environmental impact thank you jean for explaining the eco efficiency model uh, before to continue uh, could you answer to this question what will be the main reason for replacing your refrigeration system We can go even further in our approach. Uh, the analysis of data from installation now offers a new perspective for refrigeration. It's possible to monitor the performance of a system on a daily basis with a connected solution, but it's easy to implement on existing system or new installation. So I am happy to pass the floor uh, to Elodie who will tell us more about Matelex Connected Solution. 
Yeah. Hi everyone, thanks John, thanks Neil. Um, so I'm going to take up on the, the, the next part of the of this of the, this webinar. So basically we talked about uh, the overall context, we talked about how to make relevant choices for CapEx. So now let's present you a tool that, you'll, that will help you secure uh, the right level of performance and to reduce your OPEX. So we live in 2021, we live in a digital world, we live in a connected world. And this new world allows us to basically measure, analyze and optimize with the right level of data. Uh, how is our installation performing? Basically, Jean clearly stated that there is a few key parameters. We're going to come back on that just a minute after. Uh, that basically drive and make your choice relevant or not. So once you have chosen the installation, you know which parameters you need to focus on. And basically, you need to do everything that you can to make sure that those parameters do remain in the right level and basically grant you the performance you expect. But before diving a bit deeper in, on, on the data, just, uh, just a word uh, to add to what Neil presented uh, in the introduction of this webinar is why do people go to the shop? And why do people choose to go to one shop uh, instead of another one? So what we see, and this is actually a global trend, is that consumer not only goes or don't go anymore to shops uh, because of the product mix or because of the prices. Yes, these parameters remain important, but as well, they just want to make sure that the shop they go to is virtuous, meaning that this shop uh, takes very seriously environmental, uh, food safety, food quality concern. And most importantly, they are very, very sensitive and increasingly sensitive on whether the shop takes it into account or not, but most importantly, is able to prove it. So we see an increasing space for tools that basically consumer can have access to, to make sure that uh, what the shop does, it actually can prove it. So we, we see a, a, an increasing space for transparency and traceability tools. But actually, you're going to tell me uh, upon which uh, should me as a, retail as a retailer, as a shop manager, which type of data I should be able and I should be transparent on. So if we get back to the cooling system, uh, I would say there is two key parameters that uh, really need to be monitored is first of all the energy consumption, as John said, and second of all, the refrigerant level. So to give you uh, key numbers, um, if there is one number you need to remember on the energy consumption is that on average, uh, any type of retail shop, 60% of its energy bill is, uh, is for energy consumption and it's for cooling production. So how do we split uh, among the 60%? 10% uh, are for air conditioning and 50% of the total energy bill of a retail shop is dedicated to refrigeration. The second part is refrigerant. Um, so basically, why is it important to make sure that uh, you consume as less as possible? So why, why is it important to want monitor your refrigerant level? Well, basically when your refrigerant level is stable, it means that your installation is running. When your refrigerant is going, level is going low, it means that there is a leakage and there starts trouble, I would say. Uh, why troubles? Well, first of all, when, uh, when an installation is leaking, it, it basically means that the probability that you're gonna have to basically throw away the goods that you are keeping in the different fridges or, or refrigerators is getting high. So this means, uh, of course, operational losses, but most importantly, um, notoriety impact, because we all felt very uncomfortable while going to a shop, we should see that the yogurt department, then the, the type of yogurt that we wanted is basically running out. The second point is that when an installation is leaking and it ties up to the, pre to the precedent point, uh, it means that the, the, the technical parameters of the installation are going wrong. And when an installation uh, is basically not running properly, 
the, the tendency is that it's going to damage the other critical parameters. And what we see is that when an installation is leaking, it increases the energy consumption between 10 and 30 percent. So when you think back that 50 percent of the energy bill of a shop is coming from the cooling system, that can that kind of give you a, a flavor of what is going to be the impact on your bottom line. Something that we have seen uh, on the French market, just to give you a bit of a reference point of where we start from, um, in 2018, the average leakage rate uh, we monitored on the French market was between 15 and 25 percent. So this means that getting back to the comparison with the cars that uh, Jean talked about previously, um, only for one shop, um, for, a, for a medium one, I would say, the, the, the environmental footprint of this rate of leakage is close to 900 tons. Uh, 900 tons of equivalence is around uh, 900 one-way, well, two-way tickets to New York. That gives you a flame of the impact we could avoid by diminishing as much as we can the leakage rate of this installation. So now you're going to tell me, okay, now we, we have a, a flavor of which parameters are critical to monitor. Why do I need to monitor them? So I, I'm here to propose you a tool that will help you have a better control about those parameters, to measure them, to analyze them, and then to give you advices and, and way to go to basically optimize them. So Matelex, this is what we do. We are, we are basically a solution provider for uh, cooling experts that want to have a more virtuous uh, management of their installation. So here I'm presenting you on my screen uh, the new version of our tool, of our supervision tool. Perfect. So this is the basically, let's put ourselves in the shoes of a shop manager that arrives at his shop uh, at his office in the morning. He just want to make sure that uh, his cooling system is running properly and that everything is in order. So here we are in the shoes of a, of a French retail manager that has four shops in the southeast part of France. And basically, in a snapshot, opening his platform, he can see straight away what's going on. So here what we see is that when the, when the dot is green, this installation is working perfectly. When the dot is red, means that there is a leakage and that he must make sure that, that the installer he's working with is first of all informed and then has everything he needs in his hands to come back and to fix the leakage. And then in orange, it means that on that specific shop, the, the data flow is not going properly. It doesn't mean that there is a leakage, but it means that on this shop, we are losing basically the edge in the monitoring system. So if you want to go a bit deeper and understand a bit more what's going on, you simply click on the, on the specific installation where you have access to different types of information that will give you tips on where is the problem coming from, how severe is it, meaning how big is the leakage, when did it start, and when was the first alarm uh, sent. And then different tools and tips on how to bring the installation back. So this is what you see on the bottom left of the, of the, of the screen, on how to bring back the installation to his normal level of functioning. So here we saw uh, basically what's going wrong. If we dig a bit deeper, so this screen is actually available and uh, the retailer can give access to this platform to his maintenance partner to see, okay, what is the historical level of uh, refrigerant in my installation? And there you basically can actually quantify the amount of refrigerant you need to top in or the amount of refrigerant you have been consuming since whenever you want to set the start date off, just to make sure that at the end of the year, when you need to report on your refrigerant consumption, you just have to withdraw the data and basically retrieve them. Exactly same philosophy for the energy curve. And actually what a tool that we are busy developing and co-developing with our retail partner in France actually, is a set of standard reports that the retail manager and the maintenance manager can basically retrieve directly from the platform, process live, and basically produce uh, to whoever needs any type of report. 
So I presented you this tool. So basically, I'm just going to give, uh, going to dig a bit deeper in how does this tool work and which data is it based on and how it does retrieve the data. So what's important to remember is that this platform is at the end of the day only uh, an interface, a screen, and what is equally important it has how do you make sure that you capture the data, that you analyze them, that you treat them right, and that you basically display them the accurate way. So for Matelex, we have developed basically a set of sensors that we position uh, a different portion of the, of the installation just to make sure that we gather the energetic data and the refrigerant data that we need. How does the alarm system work? Once he has gathered the data, it learns. It's basically an expert system that learns from normal behaviors and that based on a learning, uh, on a learning time of seven days, can after seven days automatically say when uh, the system is working well or not. So then once the standard level is placed, how does it work? It keeps monitoring, it keeps accumulating data, data it keeps calculating trends, and when he sees that those trends, should it be on the refrigerant level or the energetic level, uh, draws a bit apart or is starting to shift, that's when he thinks that there is something wrong and he sends an alarm. So how does the alarm system works? You basically receive an email with a certain amount of information that tells you when this, the, uh, the leakage started, what is the leakage rate, and that basically helps both the retailers and the maintenance partner to estimate when is the appropriate time to run and to basically intervene and start to look for the, for the leakage. Once you have uh, all this historical data and once you get the live information and the live monitoring uh, system, what's next? Well, basically next is that when you have the data, you need to do something with it. And uh, what we see is basically that uh, when you have a significant amount of data and a significant amount of history, you can uh, better understand your installation and basically start improving the settings. So one key advantage of this type of tools is that you have um, a set of parameters that you can actually remotely uh, act on and basically improve day-to-day uh, -day and I would say even hour to hour the different settings of the installation just to make sure that it's running and getting back to the optimal level that you dimension when you use the eco-efficiency tool. Just to give you a bit of a, uh, of, uh, a range of and the magnitude and the impact of this type of tool. So Matelex, we have uh, a little bit more than 4,000 uh, devices installed all over France, and uh, we are starting to install them in Eastern Europe as well. What we see is that year on year, uh, after setting up this type of system, and so giving yourself as a retailer the opportunity to be proactive on your leakage and not reactive, you have uh, a refrigerant consumption reduction of around 80%. So when you think that uh, when you get back to the few data I gave you uh, and the environmental impact uh, those refrigerants have on the ecosystem, this is absolutely massive. Something that's important to remember is that these types of systems, they are basically agnostic of the technology. As long as you have a direct, uh, a direct detent system, you're fine. So it means that you can adapt the system on all different types of tanks, on every type of refrigerant, should it be natural. I mean, we have a few cases in France where we're working perfectly on CO2, on NH3, and we are starting to work on propane as well. And it can be adapted on new or existing installation. Before wrapping up, something that's important for us is to make sure that when we give you the system, you basically harvest the best fruit ever from that. And so we have developed uh, a certain amount of trainings and of remote technical supporting options that we can uh, dedicate to our partners to make sure that when they have the system, they have all the tools in their hand to, to get the best out of it. And as numerical and digital start by us, I'm very happy to, to inform you that we just relieved our first augmented reality uh, training offer. What does it mean? It means that uh, our technicians in France can basically sit remotely hand in hand with the person who is on site 
and just to make sure that with uh, augmented reality, they perform the right task to make sure that the installation is working at its optimum. So in a nutshell, and to conclude before handing over to Delphine, uh, the key the key words is that this type of tool is very easy to get, is fast to set up, and is basically uh, definitely improving the performance. Should it be your bottom line performance or your environmental footprint performance? And I'm handing over to Delphine. Thank you, Elodie. Uh, it's now time to answer the question. We receive a few. So the first one is, what are the possible issues of freezing goods on small evaporator and display cabinet due to high glad and sensitive product? Jean? Yes, yes, Delphine, I, I can take this one. <clears throat> so the, the glide management, uh, I mean, you have to consider that 455A being an A2L is not a retrophic product. So it has to go into new systems. And in new systems, glide management is essentially uh, done uh, by design. So heat exchangers are absolutely designed for glide. So for the end user, there is absolutely no impact on, on the stratification of temperature or whatever. This is designed to account for that. So there is no change, business as usual, and no risk, no specific impact on, on any sensible goods. Thank you, Jean. Uh, another question. What is the benefits of the Matelex system compared to traditional leak detection system? Well, that's a good question, actually. <clears throat> so first of all, something to remember is that they are perfectly complementary, meaning that it's not one or another. If you have both, you are better at. So the key, the key points that I would highlight on this type of solution is basically 24-7 live monitoring compared to the periodical one. It's a uh, constant monitoring, not only on, on leaks, but as well on a very wide uh, amount of different types of parameters. We talked about pressure, we talked about temperature, we talked about uh, energy consumption, we talked about different type of stuff that you wouldn't get only by setting up a direct method system. And most importantly, something that is worth remembering is that uh, a direct detection detects one leakage. An indirect method can basically monitor all types of leakage should they be sim simultaneous, sorry. So I think this is something that is worth remembering. Direct is very useful when it comes to identifying where on the installation there is something wrong. Indirect basically gives us live and 24 seven advices and information on how is your system performing. Thank you, Elodie. Uh, another one. 455A is a flammable refrigerant. What charge can we use in a short term? So I, I can take that one, uh, Delphine. So the charge sizes will vary depending exactly where the uh, system is, what type of system it is, what type of access people can can have to that system. Uh, and it's all covered in, in EN 378. Um, and of course, there's a Klima Life charge size uh, calculator, which can be accessed online uh, and used to help do those calculations. Um, the maximum possible is for 455A is 84 kilograms. Um, but as I said, there are a number of different uh, scenarios which will uh, vary the, the charge size which can be used. So either contact us uh, for help or, or use the charge size calculator. Thank you, Neil. Uh, thanks for your participation. Uh, it's time to leave now the webinar. But before to leave, uh, one final quiz. Uh, and uh, do not hesitate to contact us uh, to model your refrigeration system of tomorrow. Or, oh, and if you want to join us, uh, you can do it by uh, mail, climalife.uk at climalife.don.com. I wish you a very nice day. Bye bye. And uh, we hope to see you soon.